Tanker Talk Show. Listen, we got a hot topic today. How to meet your spouse, how to marry your spouse, and how to stay married. Yes, I did. I said stay married. I mean good and happy too. So you don't want to miss a minute. All right, we'll be right back. Impact is social. Impact is community. Where differences in background, color, culture, and thinking unified to provide solutions and spark innovation. Where thinking different makes you distinct and not an outsider. Where when a neighbor is weak, another comes in strength. The Impact Network. For spirit, soul, and body. Impact is yours. right here on Impact Network. All right, today's millionaire's tip is every millionaire knows the importance of saving and investing. Proper money management positions for true wealth creation. All right, so let's talk about that because that's a big, big subject to me and I think it's a big, big deal. Growing up in Detroit, Michigan, having parents that were very strong entrepreneurs. For those of you that are from Detroit, y'all remember LaGreen's Records and Tapes? Yes. My parents were doing it big before. Uh, they really were kind of ahead of their time and they had a lot of celebrities come into their record store and the retail industry at that time in the 70s and 80s, early, early 90s was booming, but we really started to see a decline there. And so one of the things that I learned in being an entrepreneur, and even if you're not an entrepreneur, I really think that this applies to you. You need to make sure that you're creating your own wealth. What do I mean by that? So let's just say you work at Pepsi Cola, you, uh, get, you have a 401k, you put in so much money, they match it, you know, your money's all connected to the stock market. I just don't think that's a smart idea. When you look at what happened in 07 and 08, and when the stock market crashed, there were millions of Americans that lost thousands, hundreds of thousands, and some of them millions of dollars, never to recoup that money again. Where did that money go? Understand that money is never lost, or it's never, it never evaporates, it's never destroyed, it never leaves the earth, so to speak. It's simply transferred. So the question is, where is the next major wealth transfer? And I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, it's going to be in gold, it's going to be in silver, it's going to be in oil. Uh, usually when you look at, when you look at gas prices right now, extremely low across the board, except for uh, the island of Bermuda. I was there a couple months ago doing a financial wealth um, meeting. And do you know their gas is like $9 a gallon? I was like, Lord Jesus, the hyperinflation. But what happened? That means that the value of the dollar went down. It causes rising prices. It gets crazy. So what's one of the best things that you can do right now? Of course, buy as much as gas as you can, right? Because it's so low, honey, yes. But one of the best things you can do right now is get your hands on gold, get your hands on silver, get your hands, um, if you can, even, you know, their oil wells. You can invest in oil wells. Some people say, well, should I get um, oil stock? Well, that's still connected to the stock market. So if there's another major crash, what's going to happen? The dollar's going to go kapooey. Prices are going to go up because of hyperinflation. So the best thing you can do is actually own physical gold, physical silver that you actually can own. Pretty much whatever is in your hands is what you own. When you own a stock, that is connected to a sheet of paper. And that paper pretty much uh, is that the, um, you know, it's pretty much depending on what the market can bear. So if oil is up, your stock is up. If oil is down, your, your stock is down. So you want to actually own physical gold and silver. I don't know if you've thought about this, but have you thought about why there's so many cash for gold places? They're every couple miles all over the country not just in this country but in other countries because the governments know what's getting ready to happen there's going to be another financial reset what happens during a financial reset the wealthier get wealthier and the poor get poor why the only difference between the wealthy and the poor is information so when you get the information you've got to move on it you might say listen i'm struggling living paycheck to paycheck what you talking about i'm telling you right now there are ways that you can get your hands on it of course you can reach out get on my website at jewelTanger.org. i'd love to get that information to you but i think it's super 
super important that you position yourself so during the next recession, it can actually be acquisition time for you. I'm super excited because this next guest is coming on, somebody dear to my heart, best friend of mine. She, uh, she's a serious entrepreneur. We're going to be talking a little bit more about those things in, in business, but I really want you to make sure that you begin to position yourself financially. How do you do that? Begin to convert your paper dollars over to gold. Begin to convert your paper dollars over to silver. Do it now while the prices are low. All right, so in the news today, we're going to also be talking about how did you know that there are millions of Americans that do not have life insurance? Can you believe that? Millions of Americans. And uh, one of the best things that you can do, I, I tell anybody, uh, one of the best things that you can do for your children to create succession, successional wealth, generational wealth, is to make sure they have a life insurance policy. Now, not just life insurance, not just the average life insurance, because the average life insurance policy was term or whole life, and you pretty much had to die to use it, okay? And if you didn't die, you just waste all that money. The best kind of insurance that you can get is index universal life insurance policy. Why? Because it does four main things. It gives you life insurance. If you get sick, it turns into disability. It also builds cash value. If you want to go buy some furniture, put a down payment on a new home, but more than that, it gives you tax-free retirement income. So from the time that you get ready to retire, 60, 65, 70, I don't know, you have to choose that number, it'll pay you an annual income every single year to the day that you die. So let's just say you have a 17 year old and you say, listen, I can afford to put $100 a month on my 17 year old, year old. that'll give them $200,000 of death benefit. And when they get ready to retire, they'll get about $100,000 a year tax free. Now mind you, if your 17 year old is 17 today, you know, 40, 40 years from now, inflation, 100,000 is not gonna be worth the same amount that it is now, but that's really setting your children up to win and win big. And the older you get, your premium doesn't go up. So listen, study out your insurances. I don't know what you have right now, but get index universal life policy because the older you get term, ex uh, term insurance, it just gets so expensive. Now I'm not saying there's never a use for term, but for the most part, you wanna build your financial portfolio to last. All right, we're going to break. We'll be right back, don't miss it. Now we can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? We know that we can. We roll it up. Cause we know how to jump. We roll it out. Roll it out. We know how to skate. We'll cut it down. Cut it down. We know what to eat. We'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? We know that we can. Can we do it? Do it. We know that we can. Yeah. Well, come on. Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, we you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Cause we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Cause we know how to play. We'll drop it down. We'll drop it down. Cause we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. Veg it night and day. Can we do it? Yeah, we you know that we can. All in together now. We can make it better now. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. Welcome back to the Jewel Tiger Talk Show on Impact Network. I'm super excited about this next guest because it is my BFF. Yes, every girl needs one, Hante. And let me tell you something, I don't hang out with no slackers. Let me tell you about this one. She's an international speaker, community advocate, successful entrepreneur, best-selling author of several books. Come on, somebody. I'm so excited about her upcoming project, Quick Tips for Singles. Don't you go nowhere. You know you need to hear how to get you a man or wife. Come on now. How to position yourself to meet, marry, marry, stay married, happily married. Come on now. To your spouse. This is a wife mother doing her thing in business. My BFF, T. Tacoa Pari. Coming out here, T. 
Hi, Joel. Yay, 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 make a change, it's so good. Just because you get saved, don't mean you got to be ugly. Yes, yes. I'm so excited to have you on, and um, you look great. You just had two, two of my babies. Two babies. Bella and Maximus, and I love them so much. Thank you. And I'm really proud of you, because you quickly got that thing together. I still got a little bit more to go, but thank you. But you look good, mother. You look good. All right, so I want you to talk to us and teach us how do you meet... Uh -huh. How do you marry, and then how you stay married? Because you know the divorce rate is crazy. So folks get married, absolutely, but they're not necessarily and staying saying, married, and hopefully happily married. Because nobody's just trying to be married just to be saying yeah, you married. So exactly. talk to us about that. Well, that's why I wrote the book. It's because I talked to a lot of women, a lot of my friend girls that were getting divorces, that were divorced, or they were single. And right. one of the things I saw is that a lot of times we made some mistakes as a single woman mm. that led us into marriages that we shouldn't have been in in the first place, oh. or we got married so quick before we were really whole mm. and so I tell people I was successfully single you know I was single up until yeah. I was 30 years old yeah and my generation before me got married in their 20s my mom right. got married when she was 22 years old gotcha. so everybody wanted to know what's wrong with you why you're not married yet but I was content yeah. with being single I was content with where I was and so mm. the Lord um, just placed in my heart to write this book to put it out there and it immediately is taken off and I'm so happy and the mm. thing is it's selling so quick that lets me know there is a need for it Absolutely. People want to know what do I do when I'm single to get married and stay married. Yes, happily married. So, okay, so tell us, my brother, Ben <laughs> and I love this couple, but tell us, how did you meet the man of your dreams? Mr. Dio Pori. Yes, honey. <laughs> Come on, talk about my brother. <laughs> well, Dio and I met in church. We okay. met in church. You know, I grew up in church. He was raised in church. And it was kind of ironic because there was a friend of mine that I went to college with. Mm. And his brother actually liked me. Stop. Yes. Dio's brother liked you. No, no, not Dio's oh, brother. <laughs> girl. <laughs> no, my friend got from college. His brother liked oh, me. Oh, his brother liked so you. So I ran into him, and he told me about a church that he was a part of. And I knew the ah. pastors. And so I said, you know, let me go visit the church. Okay, got you. So, 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 so then you said, let me go visit the church. Yeah, and then when I went to visit the church, I actually met him when I was there. He was actually the right hand to the pastor. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And immediately he came over to me after church, introduced himself, and I knew it was something about him. I wasn't too sure because I wanted to get to know him, but I knew there was something that resonated immediately. Okay, because that's what I was wondering. Did you know that when you met him, he was your husband? I knew it was something about him. I knew that, he, I knew it was something that stood out to me. Okay. I didn't know for sure that he was my husband until I got to know him. Okay. And so as I got to know him and learned his qualities and how he was and how he thinks and how much he loves God. Right. Because I had met men before that was in business. Okay. I met men before that had money. Okay. You know, I dated guys before my husband. Right. Okay. But the thing that made him different is his love for God. And so when I got to know him, that's when I knew, okay, there, everything about him describes who I want to make. Okay, so now let me ask you this. Do you feel like in your book, because certainly we want to, we all want to marry men, or if it's a man, we want to marry, a, a man would want to marry a woman, to love God, I would think, if they were uh -huh. a believer. So do you think it's superficial to want them to look a certain way? Yes, I do. So, okay. And here's why. Okay. Looks change. Mm. Body weight change. Mm. Hair changes. Mm. But what is difficult to change is the character of a person. And so I tell my girlfriends, and even in the book, it's not about the physical. It's, I think that everybody should have a physical attraction to the person they're going to marry. Okay. But physical attraction does not have to have a look. You can have a physical attraction okay. to someone that may be overweight. Ooh, that's good, because I don't know if I agree. We're going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. Dr. King, what's your next move? A march from Selma to Montgomery. Selma is loud for every man, woman, and child. We will not wait any longer. In front of a crowd. eyes have seen the glory. All right, if you're just joining, welcome back to the Jewel Tanker Talk Show. I got my beautiful BFF right here, honey, and she has got a book that I think that every person 
really needs. I mean, I really do believe Thank that. Thank you. I think it's so important yeah. that we get into our purpose. Now, we were just talking about this whole physical attraction uh -huh. thing because we do, certainly as a woman, you're looking for a man that loves God, that has character, because character yeah. can be hard to change. That was so good. Absolutely. But I want to go back a little bit uh, on the superficial side of things, maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and tell us what you were saying about the whole physical see, attraction this is what thing. I'm saying. I think there should be physical attraction, but okay. there does not have to be a physical trait specific. I hear women say all the time, oh, he have to have a six pack, okay. or he got to be this, you know, he got to look like this. Okay. What I talk about in my book yeah. is the difference between help mate and help meet. Gotcha. The Bible says in Genesis 2 and 18, God gave Adam a help meet, M-E-E-T. Mm, a lot of people say help mate. A help mate is just a body. Mm. A help meet, the word meet means to be equivalent to. Mm. And so we can say, I want a six pack figure, but you're not going to the gym. That's not equivalent. Okay, so let me. So ask, that's the physical. So then let me ask you that. So you didn't ever have just a particular guy that you were attracted to? I didn't. I, and, and again, I went deeper. I understood, because my mother was married to a five man, okay. but they got divorced before I was five years old, and he beat her physically. Mm. So I went deeper. I didn't just want someone that could look good. I wanted right. somebody that could have a more weight to them. Now, don't get me wrong, God bless me with an attractive husband. <laughs> <laughs> Very attractive. Okay, but yeah. I didn't have a look. My yeah. husband is Hispanic. Right. Prior to him, I had only dated African American men. Gotcha. So I opened up right. and I was able to meet my husband. Okay. So now, do you believe that there is one person? this created for every person? I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't believe that there's one person for everyone. I believe that there is something in you that you need that's going to help you in your course along looking for your spouse. So I believe there are certain characteristics that's for Jewel and certain characteristics that's for me that's going to make me happy okay. in a marriage. But I don't think it's just that one person because even in the book I talk, I have a section just for widows. Oh, wow. I have a section for divorcees. Wow. Because there's people that are married happily and their spouse pass away Ooh. and they go on to marry again. So I don't right. think it's anything wrong with that. There's okay. people that have married one person and thought he was the one Absolutely. or she was the one they got divorced. Absolutely. So I don't believe there's one person for okay. everybody. I believe there's a type, but you got to become in your time of singleness. It's time to live and it's time to find out who you are. Mm. When you find out who you are, then Ooh. you'll know who will attract you and who will keep you. So there's no tipping in and out of the marriage. Ooh. Ooh, that's good, girl. Juice it. Okay, so let me ask you this: When somebody is single and uh -huh. they are wanting to be, they they are wanting to be married. Uh huh. What should they be doing? And, and y'all got to get the book, really, because yeah. I'm, I just, but I just want you to just yeah. share a little bit. What are some of the things they should be doing? And I know we don't have a whole lot of time, so they got to get the book to hear everything. Right. But just two quick tips that I tell people that yeah. you should be doing. Number one is if you're courting someone or if you're planning to court someone. Baby, don't court. Go court. ahead. Yeah. Old, yes. school. Old, old school. Old school. school. Yes. Old school. Yes. If you're courting somebody, <laughs> don't be in a rush to get married. Okay. Take time to see that person in different seasons. Yeah, that's good. Because you can be happy with someone when you're courting them and you think, oh my God, I'm going to marry him because his, his money is doing well. Mm. Or everything right now in that season of his life is going good. But how does he respond when the season is bad? Mm -mm. When he may have lost his job or somebody, his family died. You want to see that person get angry. Right. You want to see them happy and sad. So if yeah. you're courting, the first tip is when you're getting in a relationship with someone that's leading to marriage, mm -hmm. don't rush to the altar. Okay. Take your time. So how important is it? Let's just say a, a woman is super successful. Does her husband have to be super successful? I mean, does that matter? I think absolutely it matters. Again, it goes back to the helpmate versus helpmeet. I think that if it's a woman, if a woman is successful, she needs to be with someone that can um, sustain her, that can that can stimulate her mind stimulate her thoughts even if he's not walking in that whole you know mm -hmm. man right now but he has the ambition he mm -hmm. has dreams he's working toward the goal then that's okay but you have to have someone that talks the way you talk that think the way you think mm -hmm. it's not going to be a hundred percent across the board but there must be some equivalence there so it's got to be some equivalence because if it's not then you think you're going to get be some there's going to be in the marriage yeah, absolutely there's going to be problems absolutely i yeah. talked to young ladies that have gotten married and was divorced in two years oh my gosh just because they weren't they just, just because they, they wanted a person they wanted, so 
listen, you got to get the book. Get on her website and get the book today. Y'all know y'all need it, okay? <laughs> All right, so now next, I'm super excited. for our, We got a game, girl. <laughs> and it's called, What Would You Do? Okay. Okay, so I really want to hear your answer to this. Okay, now this is one of our viewers. Tanisha from ne Nebraska finds okay. herself having to take care of her sister's two children okay. and also be a caregiver for her sister. Okay. If you were Tanisha, how would you turn what some may see as a hopeless situation into a successful speaking career? Wow, that's a good <laughs> <laughs> It's a great question because I was Tanisha. Oh, really? You know, I lost my mother when I was 14. My mom left five children. My youngest sibling was four years old. Oh, wow. So I immediately became a mother overnight. Yeah. And so what I did, if I was Tanisha, what would I do? What I actually did yeah. is I used, I found ways to, to get the pain out. Mm. And so for me, it wasn't a lot of people I could talk to because I was the caregiver in my home. Mm -hmm. I was the one that everyone came to. So I started journaling. I started writing my feelings out. I had to get it out some way. Wow. Everybody goes through something, but if you keep it balled up inside, you're going to explode. Yeah. So right. I began to write it out. Those journals became books. Wow. And so the book we're talking about today is my sixth book. Oh my God. Because those journals. So proud of you. Girls, <laughs> those wow. journals, what became therapy for me, became okay. a platform for my business, for me yeah, to do sure. motivational speaking, yeah. for me to do leadership consulting. And then, of course, your relationship with Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a good church, I'm sure, while you were going through this. I mean, Tanisha hopefully has a good church home. Absolutely. Because she's, she needs to be getting yeah. fed the word yes, definitely. on a consistent definitely. basis. There are some things that only God can heal. Yeah. And so it's important that she connects with the church, connect with the spiritual foundation, and have accountability. Yeah. And then also with that, the, the books are one thing. In addition to that, I found a way to give back to my community. Okay. I wanted to find the little Tekoas in my community mm. that may have been going through, like Tanisha, and say, look, baby, you can make it. Mm. These are the steps I took. I encourage you to do the same thing. And mm. so I do a lot of work in my, in my hometown mm. and in the city I live in with the sheriff office, with Department of Juvenile Justice, wow. because I could have been that child. One decision, and mm. I could have been arrested. I could, be, I could have been in prison. Wow. You know, so we go through some hardships, but it's important that you have people around you to help to make right choices. Absolutely. Now, you talked about the pain, because a lot of times when people are dealing with pain, that's when they get into drug addiction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. alcohol mm -hmm. abuse, trying to cover those things mm -hmm. up. You were surrounded by, I'm sure alcohol, had access yeah. to alcohol yeah. and drugs. Yeah. What do you think, you, you know, what would you tell Tanisha, like, that that's not the answer? Yeah. How did you deal with that? And you're right, Joel. My, uh, my parents dropped out of high school. My father sold drugs. You know, I had uncles that are still, you know, in that, in that environment. What I did is I dreamed. Mm. I had to take my mind places that I wasn't currently. Oh, wow. I had to see myself in the future. I had to see myself beyond my current yeah. situation. Right. And still today, I'm a big dreamer. Wow. And then I connected with people that I knew could help me, such as my church, right. such as my teachers, and said, right. hey, I need help. Right. Absolutely. That's powerful. So Tanisha needs to get with, hopefully, a good church. A good church. Some mentorship. Uh -huh. and, and, get, and get everything out. And get it out. Mm -hmm. And then stay away from the people because I'm sure there are people in her life, girl, just smoke this, or girl, yeah, just drink yeah. this. So she needs to pretty much cut them off because that's not going to help her. No, not I've at never all. seen anybody say, woo, that alcohol did it for me. You know what yeah. I mean? And if anything, it causes a lot more pain. Absolutely. And so she's going to have to find that outlet, someone that she can actually talk yes. to. Reading your books. Yes. You know what I mean? Seriously, can offer a lot of healing mm -hmm. uh, for her. Talk to us quickly about some of the other books that. That might be good for Tanisha. Absolutely. The books that I previously wrote actually were for teenagers and college students. You Got the Power of Breaking the Vicious Cycle would be a very good book for Tanisha. That book talks about my life story, how I oh, broke wow. the cycle because I was the first person in my family to go to college <laughs> and to graduate from college. Oh, wow. How did I break the cycle of my parents dropping out of high school, breaking the cycle of poverty? You wow. know, no one in my family had ever been outside of the city. We were wow. in the projects and from the projects we graduated and we moved to the trailer parks. Wow. You know, so that was life for me. That was home for me. So how do I break that cycle if that's all I know? Right. And so that book would be great for her. I also wrote another book, You Got the Power of Blossoming into a Beautiful Lady. Ooh. Talking about self-esteem and image, knowing that you're beautiful, wow. even if your environment isn't beautiful. That's such a big deal yeah. because probably one of the best things that a Tanisha could work on right now 
is developing her self-esteem and her confidence because I feel like no matter what situation you're in, yeah. if you're confident yeah. and if your self-esteem is intact, you'll be yeah. like Joseph. You might be in the pit, but you're not going to stay in the yeah. pit. Eventually, you're going to get to the palace. Yeah, you'll have a royalty mindset. Yeah. And even the book that we're, we were talking about, Christian Singles, that's one of the number one underlying themes is for women to take this time that you're single to live your life, to become the best person that you want to be. Don't be so anxious to get married. Right. Live your life so that you have that self-esteem and that confidence. Confidence. Right. And when you have that confidence, you don't just give in to any man. You can sit back and choose. You won't compromise. Exactly. Because I think what happens with a lot of women is they start compromising mm -hmm. because they just want a man so bad. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to start compromising. You want to be whole within yourself. Listen, I am super proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm so glad to call you best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations. Yes. Your set is beautiful. You're Thank doing one. You. It's going to go far. I'm so Thank proud you. of you. Thank so you, proud baby. of you. So listen, you all need to get on her website, get the new book for singles and all the other books that she talked about. I really, really think they can be a serious aid because you want to be your very, very, very best. So listen, don't turn that down. We'll be right back after this break. Impact is social. Impact is liberating, presenting life in its fullest and releasing your greatest potential, uncovering your purpose and your destiny. Bringing spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and financial empowerment so you're free to live your calling. The Impact Network for the spirit, soul, and body. Impact is yours. All right, welcome back to the Jewel Tanker Show. All right, wasn't that good with Tacoa? Woo, honey, I cannot wait. I started reading it, but I gotta finish. All right, listen, now it's time for Reality Watch. You all remember the story of Tina Campbell, you know, from Mary to Mary, very good friends of Ben and I. We love those girls, very proud of them. But the reality is, we know, because they talked about it openly on TV, that, you know, Tina's husband was cheating. Not once, but consistently every time she was away from home in the world. So let's talk about that incident and what could have caused her husband to cheat. Now, let me say this first of all. I don't care what she was doing. You know, you have to, when you make a mistake, you just got to take responsibility for it. And he certainly needs to take responsibility for it. And I think that, you know, it looks like from what I can see on the show that he has taken responsibility, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to take time for Tina to heal or any woman in that you know, fact who deals with uh, infidelity in the marriage. But I want to talk a little bit about what could have been done to avoid it. I mean, I, you know, I told you guys earlier with Ben and I, we really try to make sure as much as we travel, we travel a lot together, but there are times we travel apart. We try to make sure we're communicating, talking to one, one another, because what your husband needs in one season may not be what he needs in another season. And sometimes I found, honestly, that men don't know always how to communicate what it is they need. So that's why you need Holy Ghost to you give you some good old discernment. And you know, you might just feel like, you know what, my husband just needs a lot of affirmation in this season or maybe right now he needs you know for us to go out and do some adventurous things and date so that we don't get into the same old routine you know go to the movies go to eat at the same restaurant you know sometimes it just takes adventure so there are lots of different things that probably could have been done to maybe help to maybe not have that happen but anyway until next time join us next week right here at the Jewel Tanker Show remember you can have it all